Shinies, aka Fleeting Beauty, back yet again with another video for you guys. And look at who I have today. Aren't they beautiful? <laughs> <laughs> so today we fix not we. I figured that we can do a little relationship counseling. No, I'm just kidding. Um, more of no, just like really. <laughs> just a little like tidbits on what to look for in a Christian spouse and mate and you know what's important to look out for what's important to look for the things that actually matter that sometimes when you're single you think matters and then when you get married you realize like it didn't matter we're just going to do a little q a some discussion some personal examples you know just hang out have girl time and drink tea coffee <laughs> so we're going to get right into this um but I will, for one, go ahead and introduce each of these lovely ladies individually. So, here we go. Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Janae. Hey, guys. I'm Shanice, and this is Cash. Hi, this is Summer. Is what? that your throat? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go ahead and start with the first question. What do you guys think would be the difference between like worldly secular dating and dating as a Christian. For one, I feel like secular dating, they're not really looking into marriage and I don't think they focus on that when they're dating. Mm, I feel true. like when you true that, true that. are in a, a Christian relationship, you're focusing on that because that's your goal. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the difference right then and there. Yeah, I think superficial versus <laughs> quality, I would say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, not concerned about looks and somebody turning you on and, you know, the things that are superficial versus what can someone offer you in the long run. Yeah. You know, being a spouse and a mate. I yes. feel it. How they got to be as a father. Oh, How yeah. they got to be the lead your children. <laughs> mm -hmm. All, you know, leader in the household. Yeah. All that. What do you think? I think going off what you said about the superficial and the quality part, like, I think when it comes to... I'm too popular, guys, sorry. <gasps> oh my oh, god! It rings on everything. I'm oh. like... <laughs> <laughs> but with the, with the superficial and the quality thing, I think that um, when you're in a Christian, from a Christian perspective, you're actually looking for, like you said, quality, like when it comes to someone's... You go deeper. Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't matter if they're bomb or not. It's like... You're looking at their character. <laughs> like you're looking at whether or not they have pride issues. How do they get along with their family? Like, is this, yeah, not what he could buy you. It. Yeah, it's not just about like, oh, well, you know, he's mom. Um, it's just, it's definitely more superficial, like on a world yeah. standpoint. Yeah, I think like even just going further into like kind of where I was going with the question. I feel like when it comes to worldly dating, people tend to hop into relationships quickly or hop in a lot of relationships in general. Like it's it's like, oh I'm just dating around, I'm keeping my options open, I'm like wasting time basically. Like Yeah, and then just giving yourself to someone who isn't deserving of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like and not even on a sexual level, just calling someone your boyfriend. For what mm -hmm. if you don't see them as your potential husband? Hey, you know. Mono. And there's stuff that lasts like long, like things that are gonna make the relationship really last a long time, all the way until death do you part. Like, mm -hmm. like being patient, <laughs> like right. looking for certain things in somebody. But it's like if you're not known to look for that, you don't even know that you're worth a guy being patient for you mm -hmm. or certain things where it's like that's why the divorce rate is so high. That's yeah. definitely like the key word, patience. Oh yeah. Patience, <laughs> unconditional Especially for us women, because we ain't patient. We want a man yeah. now and we want to <laughs> get married now. The first date went well. So where's my ring? <laughs> so going along with that, since we were talking about potential and like date hopping and people not being worth your time and um, what was the word you use? Um, Superficial. 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 What are things, especially as you two single, lovely, single, lovely, single beautiful ladies? Single. <laughs> single. Um, what do you guys Hard like? Work. What do you? <laughs> <laughs> well, what are you guys looking for? Like, what? What are like the main things you look for when like 
Because obviously, as the women, as women of God, and believing that men are, not, I don't want to say they're aggressor, but the ones who pursue, pursue yeah. yeah, pursue you guys, um, how do you, basically, how do you make yourself available without pursuing, you me? Mm -hmm. how do you make yourself available without pursuing, and then, when you, when that person finds that you're available, what are the things you look for in them to see if they're what you're you know, looking for? Ooh, loaded questions. Seriously. Sorry! Okay, I make myself available by, literally, I just, I just go hard after God, and that makes men who are interested, that'll make them yeah. ask questions. And I'm, I keep it very genuine, like, um, on my social media, so they don't see no... <laughs> We are under some guy's arm or something like that so mm -hmm. they start to see hints that I'm single or they'll literally just ask. hit me up and ask <laughs> like oh, okay we are you dating anybody or do you want to go on a date and um, once that point comes then I, you know at first I evaluate if I'm physically attracted right off the bat because if yeah. not it's like no I'm not <laughs> <laughs> so bad man I physical attractiveness is, is important, important. It's it's really important. Important. And I hate to try say to act that like because it's, it's no, not. it is. No, it is I don't want, it does kind of sound shallow a little bit. It does more to that. It's but that's me. very important to me. Like, if I'm not attracted to you, you better be like have the bombest personality. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you start off with like who's like like you start with who's attractive first, and then once you filter that out. Then you go into like, okay, now let's get into the character. Right. Mm -hmm. And then once the character is there, it's like, okay, now out of this bunch, who do I really mesh with? And that yes. is what's important. People get the he's bomb factor, and then like, they like everything, yeah, every, nothing else matters yeah, now. Exactly. And it's like then when all hell's breaking loose, and you're staying because somebody looks good, or they look good on your arm, or your social status because you're with that person. Exactly. Like, you ain't even really all that happy though. I don't know if I can really touch base on that like how do I make myself available because I'm newly single <laughs> for one so I don't really know I feel like I have to learn now because I don't plan on being in a relationship anytime soon but um but I it just what Janie said too like just going after God and um they fuck right I mean that alone will like attract you and just me in general I'm just I have such an amazing personality oh so. <laughs> get out of here it's just, I really I'm, I try to be I'm not super confident but, um, qualities, mm -hmm. definitely I want somebody that is a, will lead. Like, that's something that's really important to me because I look at all that. I look at how they're going to be as a father, um, you know, just somebody that's going to teach me. I'm going to learn from them. And, um, I mean, yeah, I think that's just really important to me. And then obviously their personality and, like, how they treat me and their relationship with God, how that... No, that's all gonna fall into place too. So. Uh, leadership is definitely mm -hmm. key. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I feel like leadership and just the quality of his relationship with God, because it's like if he, if for me, like if he's not sensitive to conviction oh, and yeah. hearing God's voice oh, and yeah. he puts that into action, mm -hmm. we are not yoked mm -hmm. at all because. Yeah. I'm the same page. Like, I, can't, I can't be your walking conviction. Like, yeah. You gotta, yeah. yeah. Which goes under the, the leadership. Yeah. But it's like, I feel like depending on what your conviction is and your relationship with God, it's like if they're under that, you're gonna find yourself as a woman trying to be like, you're not convicted about this? Right. Like, you know, but he's like, he's not. And that will Loki just, he'll build yeah. a resentment because yeah. you're getting on his nerve. And you build resentment too. If mm -hmm. if he doesn't start influencing you to backtrack, so that's the whole point of being a good leader. Mm -hmm. And yeah. obviously before you get married, you want to see those qualities. Like, is he going to pick you up, you know, and remind you of the things of God when you're weak? Yeah. Those are all, you know, those things fall under your leadership. And it's important. That's so exactly important. Like, yeah. How they handle a conflict. So, and that's something you can see right away. Like. If they're going to be someone that listens, who's going to negotiate, who's going to compromise, who's just going to kind of be like, no, this is how I like it, and that's Stubborn. it. Yeah. yeah. So right. it's like all Ooh. those things I matter Ugly. a lot. Like, <laughs> and then in a, in a marriage, there's going to be so many things that you're just going to have to compromise with. Like at the end of the day, there's going to be some you're not going to be happy with the result, and you're just going to have to trust God that you know the male, especially if he made the final decision, which 
you know, as Christians, we believe that we submit to our husbands. Everybody takes that submit work and makes it something different. Such an ugly, like, yeah, that's a whole, we can make a whole video it's so about so beautiful submit. if you really, yeah. if the man yeah. really yeah. understands yeah. is bad. That's and right. that's the thing, it's right. all about a man and his God. relationship with Christ. Exactly. Like, he's gonna know what it means for a woman to submit, and then he's gonna, what is it? Love your wife as Christ of the church. So, it's not gonna just be you're submitting to a man who's just trying to rule Abusive over you. Abusive and yeah. rude and disrespectful. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So all those things matter. You can you can see all that in the beginning. So people are like, I never saw this coming. It was but there. Right. Don't black, don't ignore the, the little red flag. Yes. or the pink flag <laughs> or the black ones. Right. None of the flags. Don't ignore. Like, the pink is kind of like. like Stay focused. What are things you view? And this can be for anybody. It can go for any pertinent pertinent This question can kind of go for just people in general. What do you think are, because I know, like, especially in relationships and looking for, like, a man of God, a lot of people are like, I met him at church and I thought he was this and but he's like everybody else. Like, what do you think are the things that, um, that really sh prove, I guess prove, that someone is a Christian or that someone is after Christ? Because we're all humans and we all make mistakes, but what is the difference between a man of God who's really a man of God that you kind of see some things you're like okay he's slipping or a person that's just in the world but goes to church on Sunday. Well, yeah, I think you gotta know your Bible to be honest. You gotta know what to look for. Right because like I mean you can't just go off of somebody saying oh yeah I'm a Christian that's what I check you know um, or if they attend church because there's a lot of people that attend church mm -hmm. and live a secular lifestyle so I feel like it's just their knowing, lifestyle though hmm? like their lifestyle like that shows yeah. everything but what does that mean what is what does that look like you know and how they are outside the church are they reading their bible daily are they you what know, are their actions I get what you're getting at like oh my gosh oh okay. yeah go for it. <laughs> no okay so this example like I love this example so like I have I don't know anything about the medical field at all like at all so it's like if somebody told me they were like a surgeon or something and they they were just starting to list like I was like oh so what do you do and they said something about and they just started using all these medical terms they could be talking about freaking ultrasounds or something and I wouldn't know the terminology I wouldn't know like what his day consists of but I don't know anything about what a surgeon does when they're there so it's like but if I was actually knowledgeable I would be able to be like surgeons don't do that or they don't you know so it's like if I don't like what you were saying about being knowledgeable about the word like if, if I don't know my word and I don't know what Jesus said our assignment was as believers like I wouldn't be able to recognize it mm -hmm. like I wouldn't I would have no idea and I think our ignorance sometimes um, when we're looking for a mate, our ignorance and knowing what an actual Christian is, we might not even know ourselves. Yeah. So we don't even know like how to recognize if somebody else is one. So when he says, oh, I go to church on Sunday and he's, I don't know, a singer in the choir or whatever he does, we're looking at it like, oh, I guess those are Christian cues. Yeah. But if you don't know the word, it's like, it's easy to be like, oh no. What does the word <laughs> I thought about that too like uh, first off if you're trying to have a man of God anyway which I hope y'all are cause let me tell y'all but if you're trying to have a man of God like you need to make sure you're a woman of God first I feel like everybody puts up these criteria of what they want and it's like you can't even match your own criteria so how are you looking for somebody that's out of your league basically you, attract anyway. you are yeah. we go to seeking God hard first because exactly. if you're going after him hard you're gonna build up a strong Christian character first and then of course you know you're not just thirsty for a man there was a <laughs> meme I was like I, was like, I think I might even post on Instagram it was a while ago it was back when I was single so but um it said like it was like uh, how to find a, a date or a man or something like that and it was like 
run as fast as you can towards God and whoever keeps up with you then it's like introduce yourself like yeah I used to have that as my Facebook uh, right no, like, <laughs> the difference between someone who's um, struggling and 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 is a Christian and struggling and someone who is not a Christian and saying they're a Christian and just living in sin um, I think a lot of people um, Christians get called hypocrites a lot because if you say you're a Christian you somehow are like a saint and perfect and any small slip up it's like oh I thought you were a Christian kind of situation um, and I think one of the faults is that people don't are ignorant to the word for one and the reason we are Christians is because we recognize we need a savior because we are imperfect people but also we strive to be like Christ so with that being said if you the difference between someone anybody that's a Christian and someone who claims Christianity and just is not, not sadly to say you're not <laughs> is someone who lives in sin who sits in it who has fun in it and has no conviction in it that's just chilling in it versus a person who is convicted and is trying to correct their behavior like if you're, if you're posting like turned up drinking cussing at the club happy all on snap instagram and everything and then at church on sunday mm, and they're that. repeating it yeah over and it. over again and like no but someone who might have went out did something like crap that i feel convicted i screwed up i need to get it together ask you know repent and is on the mark to try to correct it i think a lot of people confuse the two and a lot of people twist that were forgiven to mean that i can do whatever i want because i'm forgiven and i'm just about to stay living this way and completely false because mm -hmm. would you forgive somebody if, right. if they kept they was doing the same thing over and over again and talking about some i'm sorry but then mm -hmm. the next day mm -hmm. not be afraid mm -hmm. to like when you guys are sinning and you're like in a bad place don't be afraid to go to god mm -hmm. like some people feel like well I, I feel bad like my friend literally this happened like a few days ago when i was at work she knows i go to church and stuff she's just my snapchat and she was like um she was like, I, be, like, I want to go to church. I haven't went in a long time. She was like, but she's like, I feel bad because I've been bad. And I was just like, it's crazy that people think like they can't go to God because of the things they've been doing when really that's when you need them the most. Like right. you need, you know. So yeah, it's just like two extremes. Like yeah. people are always on like the extreme sides. <clears throat> So, do you guys have any personal experiences of when you started, you know, dating somebody and then found out like, what God are you worshiping? <laughs> I knew! I just knew! <laughs> um, I can't. Yeah, I, I want to share. I want to share an experience. So there was this guy that I was dating, and. <laughs> was that I was always the one bringing up God like I feel like that's one thing to really look for if you're even if you're friends with somebody like it doesn't have to be a relationship it can be your parent it can be a sister whoever but if if they're not talking about God as a part of every area of their life like God isn't the lens they look through when they address everything that's obvious <laughs> like yeah. they're not going to him for anything like they're not thanking him, they're not trying to like pray with you, they're not, so it's just, I just noticed that, that he just, I was the one bringing up God all the time, and when situations would come up, and then also, there's another thing, this, okay, so, like, like, I think it depends on where you are, you know, but personally, from my experience, I love, I love theology, I love studying who God is, you know, and I really, just have a strong relationship with him so if you say something that's so elementary it's like okay no like we're we're just not compatible <laughs> like if I say to turn to oh we're gonna study in um I don't know um Exodus and you look at in the New Testament 
discern yeah, I mean well for me it's a little different because I was already with the person my husband shout out to Jeremy <laughs> um, but when we we're dating we started dating very very young 15 years old and at the point that I got saved he did not so you know things changed and I started to look beyond him and I decided he was not the person for me at the time, clearly. And I had to let him go. As hard as it was, I had to let him go because I knew that he was not the person God intended for me to be with. He was not the person at the time, obviously. The right that, person the, at the wrong time right, is, is the, the wrong, wrong person. person. I love so that. I, had to, I had to let him I'm go. <laughs> I fall after God, and obviously, like he, we could have, we could have still, you know, been together at the time if he decided to change his life. But he wasn't on that page, so I decided, it, you know, it, he was not for me. And God ended up, you know, softening his heart, and he became a Christian, got saved, and it was so we good. came back together. And we've been together a total of. Going on 13 years now, married for three years. So, if that is not a testimony for all of you out there, I don't know what is. What the, <laughs> but you gotta follow. Seriously, you gotta yeah, follow. following Christ like that's the that's same as like that one meme that they have like the little kid and the Jesus who's right there, and they have like a little ugly, beat up little teddy bear, and then oh, he has like a nicer one, one behind, and he's yeah. like, but I want it, like. Now, let it go. Trust me. Trust me. Right. God, he doesn't tempt you or whatever, but he will test you mm -hmm. um, in order for you to, like, build up your faith and character. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's literally a test, like, I'm going to ask you to do something, like, to show who are you worshiping? Mm -hmm. Like, is right. this really real? Like, he's going to provide. He may provide something like that where we come across a guy we like or already dating someone we like, and it's like, we get infatuated, but if you discern something, because you have a relationship with God, and you discern something where God's like, uh, y'all not really yoked, or maybe he's not there yet, or like, no, I need you to go this way, and if you actually go through with it, like, that was God testing you, and I think he blessed you with that, because mm -hmm. I think mean, he did. opened, because he knew your guys' relationship, and you guys really were compatible, mm -hmm. it was literally just the spiritual aspect of it, it's like, I think God really opened up Jeremy's mm -hmm. eyes. Yeah, for you was, because of your obedience. Yeah, that's so amazing, I love y'all's just I know. Y'all should be y'all should start a, a, a conference. <laughs> <laughs> the do's and the don't. No, you, you know what? No. the don'ts oh like boundaries uh, the don'ts in uh Cardi? pre-marital oh, sex yeah. don't do it Zounds. everybody Zounds. everybody Zounds. like how does it you can do it say what is it Zounds. Zounds. do it i stopped you um premarital sex guys look it we're all human beings we understand i can't believe you're looking <laughs> Yeah, I know. I said, I feel like you look really great. But, okay. Everybody looks, I feel like people look at the fact that 
premarital sex is a sin as like God just trying to take away all the fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you actually look at the issues of today's current situations, you would see that premarital sex is a cause of a lot of nonsense. Yeah, child support, she said. Baby said, daddy drama, baby mama drama. Um, STD. Bro there's so many yeah. such things on baby mama. Broken baby. homes. Yeah. I know a lot of people don't want to refer yeah. to things as broken homes. They try to use, what is the new term? Um, Modern families or oh, broken homes. Okay? <laughs> when there's a mother and a father and a child, like that is a unit that God created. Yeah. So when that is not complete, it's broken. And we're gonna stick to that. Okay, mm -hmm. so that is that's one of the results of premarital sex. Like, cause nobody just the importance of home. having sex with somebody that you truly soul ties. Love. Like that's such a big intimate. In intimate. <laughs> That is such, that's real intimacy right there. So right. it needs to be with someone that you're going to be with for the rest of your life and that loves you so very much and not with the person that... And that blinds you. Don't even ignore that. Especially for us women, it blinds your judgment. Like, mm -hmm. you know, because we, we start to feel like we're in love with this Before person. Before you actually are. You right. Mm -hmm. Because of, you know, our sexual intimacy. So it's like, you know, <coughs> don't, don't do that to yourself. And even if you, even if you are like, even if you are in love, if you're in love, love, it's like, it's one of the things where, well, you know what, if we're so in love and we're so sure that we can make this kind of a decision to have sex, then what, why is it that sex is not as important as like marriage? Mm -hmm. It's like, you might as well get married then. Right. It's like, get married. And not to say that we're all perfect people sitting up here, but just as we came to Christ, like that realization and yeah, yeah, got it. Come on now. It ain't easy, but you know, it's something to actually think about and try to do. I feel like people just completely throw it out. Like, no, they don't. Don't live with your boyfriend. Don't. <laughs> don't. 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 do it. My goodness. And you'd be ready for that ring. And you wonder why. Because y'all playing house. Five years. Oh, like, so, okay, no. That's so real. And cooking for them. What's that saying? That, what like, you? Why would the guy buy a cow? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's like oh, and then the whole. I know some adults that are that claim to be wise that actually agree with the statement that you should live with them so you can yeah. make sure and no. see how they are in like, the house setting. Do they wash? They do they pick up after themselves? Do they keep the bathroom clean? Do they? What, how do they act around the house? Like if and, that's that big, then yeah. They can be a party. Exactly. <laughs> if that, if whether they put the toilet seat down is going to determine whether y'all can work out <laughs> and stay single. Okay? That's like, there's going to be way bigger fish to fry right, than right, a freaking right, toilet exactly. seat or snoring. That completely contradicts the whole point of what God said marriage was. Mm -hmm. Like, if you feel like, oh, let me test this out to see if, it's like God was saying, no, I want you to get in something so that no matter what happens, you will work stay together it. because yeah. he does that. It's supposed to be a reflection, you know, how mm -hmm. he loves us. So it's like, mm -hmm. the whole point of even getting married, I think we have that, the definition of that completely, like, it's perverted. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, get married, and then it's like, okay, well, if things don't work out, yeah, we, I, then I'm nice. out. But God's like, no, like, the whole point of getting married is so you can sit there and be an example to be like, okay guys, I'm stepping into a commitment to show the world that something can last no matter the trials. Like that's the whole point of what it's supposed to be, so it's it's perverted. People think of marriage is temporary nowadays. But you know, the whole point of marriage, like it's not, it's, there's gonna be things that drive you crazy. But what I've learned and through like just being married and listening to podcasts and just learning about marriage and relationships and what God intended, like marriage is meant to bring you closer to Christ. Like your flaws, as much as you're pointing the finger at your partner, like we would be happy if you did this, if you did, they're doing the same thing. Like there's things that we, for one, just compromise, forgiveness, unconditional love, working through problems, kindness, like there's just so much stuff you learn. You learn your impatience. I should be able to. I'm still working on that. Me too. <laughs> it's meant to bring out all those flaws you have that are unlike Christ and make you learn like, okay, I got issues, I need to work on this. Not so that your partner meets your every desire and makes you happy and complete to you. Like, if that's what you're getting married for, you're bound to be happy. Yeah, because you're never be satisfied. Yeah. Nobody's meant to satisfy you. Only God can do that. Like, 
people can't do that. Just as much as you can't satisfy somebody else completely. Why do you think people out here cheating? Because they think they're supposed to be getting satisfied all the time. You ain't going to be satisfied. It ain't going to happen. It ain't never about you. It, ain't it, ain't it, ain't about you. <laughs> it really isn't. It, it is still about, about you. you. It's still going to be about you. Right. And don't you think this song is about you? It ain't. <laughs> Alright guys, so that is the end of our questions. So we're just going to end this little segment, Girl Talk situation with just a little advice from each of our wise, intelligent, beautiful women of God sitting up here. <laughs> what is your advice you would give to the viewers? Like just on anything, whether it's Christianity, relationships in Christianity, men in Christianity, <clears throat> like what you got? I would say, oh, sit it down. together. <laughs> just go on your puberty. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would definitely say just from my past recent experience um <laughs> like, <my> recent past <laughs> probably just like when you know what you want just don't settle even like no matter how much you feel like you love that person like don't settle you know the qualities that you want and desire in a man aren't there like don't settle because it's really it's not going to be good in the end in the long run Good one, Summer. Jeez, cheers to that. <laughs> cheers. We even got a cup. So nothing. <laughs> Wait. So yeah, don't settle more. Six things. Right. 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 So my piece of advice would be to really take time and be content with knowing who you are and really focusing on yourself as a woman and being satisfied with being single and just literally covering yourself and drowning yourself in God. Surround yourself with females. Like, if you're a female. <laughs> surround yourself with females. Because <laughs> if God could be watching this, well, surround yourself with like, men. Get some info with girls. Right? Right. It's like, as a woman, surround yourself with women. See what your purpose is separately from the guy. And, like, really build and strengthen your relationship with God. Because, like it says in the word, like, if we really acknowledge him in every decision we make, like, he's not going to lead us to a disappointment and that includes picking a partner <laughs> so it's like really drowning yourself knowing what to look for and that way when that guy comes to pursue you you'll know whether to give him the time of day or not and you'll have you'll know that God sent him and like it says he won't lead you to a disappointment so you guys will have a more smooth future because you guys are both doing the same thing so um, that's that would be my advice when looking for a major day communication yeah and that is a very simple word but I feel like it's so broad at the same time you know initially or starting off with dating be honest be honest with what you want because ain't nobody got time for games be real stop trying to put up this cute little front like you're on an interview being like fake <laughs> don't be fake <laughs> be real if something irritates you tell them don't try to act like oh I don't want to be a nag. Right. Like, you if you were a nag, be a nag. <laughs> right? Because honestly, that's why I layer the relationship. Like, like, dang. Like, what? you were like, when I work right. with you. And then like, all hell breaks loose. So, yeah. be real, be honest. Like Sorry. You should have went. You let me go. And then in marriage, <laughs> also communicating is so, so, so important. Communicate every emotion. Well, not everything. Some things you just got to let go. But it's be saying. Communicate, <laughs> you know? Yeah, you just gotta communicate. It's so important. You put that on. Cause I have a spit shop on, and that's not cute. Spit. Have a spit. Y'all are so <laughs> extra. <laughs> no, you said it real weird. <laughs> Y'all heard it weird. Cause my head dropped in right like you were like Miss Gam. Whatever. No way you met you. My final advice would be to to really seek out God and find what your passion is, what your, well not even your passion, well that too, because your passion usually leads to your calling, but just knowing what your calling is because even in my husband's experience, um, being with somebody who didn't really know where God was calling her, but she, he was with someone who didn't know where God was calling her and sometimes like your calling is somewhere different and you find out like dang you're not for me because we're not even going in the same place so it's not even that that person's not you know a man of God or a woman of God or whatever it's just that our callings are different and we're not on the same right. track so I think just seeking out before a relationship seeking out God finding out what it is that you're supposed to be doing with your life 
for the kingdom to bring glory to God and then, you know, start running towards that and then whoever running alongside you introduce yourself. Well, it's whoever's <laughs> keeping up with you. <laughs> that is it for today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Super appreciate it. If you guys have not already, hit that subscribe button because it'll make me happy and them happy actually. Yeah. yeah. I really don't care. Oh, <gasps> not this one, not this one, not this one. And she's supposed to be my sister. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Okay. If you like this video and you want to see more videos like this with, you know, some girl talk, then let me know by hitting the thumbs Welcome up. Welcome to the girls room. I'm probably going to be doing a men's segment of the same kind of dating situation. So that should be coming up fairly soon. As soon as I find some men. I'll catch you guys in my next video, but until then, always remember that bless, bless are the pure, pure in heart. heart. Peace, smile, Reese, cornrows, and afros. Bye! I don't know you guys are on the track. <laughs> <laughs> I was all alone. I was like, 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 I